Hello, welcome back. Today I will solve Lico 84, the largest rectangle in histogram. We're given an integer array height, and this represents the height of each bar for the histogram. The width of each bar is 1. We're tasked to find the area of the largest rectangle in the histogram. Here is another representation of the height array. So you can see the value here represents the height of each bar with a width of 1. So what are these rectangles that we have to find? For example, here will be a one rectangle within the histogram. Here will be another rectangle within the histogram. Here's the third example of an, a rectangle within the histogram. The one that is the largest one for this particular histogram is this one, and it has an area of 10 units. Let's talk about the heights of this rectangle first. What are the possible heights of this rectangle? Well, the height could be any of the value in the height array. So it can have a height of 2, 1, 5, 6, 2, and 3. The values in the array define the subset of heights that's possible for all the rectangle if we are looking for the largest rectangle. We can in principle iterate through the height array and we will ask what's the biggest rectangle one can make from this height. And then we can go to the next one and say what's the largest rectangle we can make from this height and also this height, and so on. Now that we talk about the heights, let's talk about the width of these rectangles that we can make. Take this rectangle for example. This has a height of 5. What are the boundaries of this rectangle for this height? The width is defined by the two indexes on the left and on the right. Look at where the boundaries are for this rectangle. What is the bars that it can include? As you can see, if you have the height of 5, the rectangle that you can make from that height would include all the bars that are of the same height or higher on the left and on the right. The boundaries are defined by the bar that has a lower height or the boundary of the array. So for example here, on the left hand side you can have a 1 which defines the left hand limit because 1 is smaller than 5. And on the right hand side, you have the value of 2 here, which also because of 2 is less than 5, it defines the limit on the right hand side. Since the width of the rectangles are defined by a pair of indices, we can imagine that we can go through all possible pairs of indices and we can find the minimum height within those pairs of indices and we can figure out the rectangle one can make within the boundary of those pairs of indices. Now that is not a bad solution to go through all possible pairs of indices. That's an all of n squared solution. Given this series, the other solution for this problem is that we will find the nearest smaller number on the left and a smaller number on the right for each bar. Then we can determine the boundary for the width of each rectangle for each bar in the histogram. Now let's go through the process of establishing the limits of each rectangle on the left hand side and also on the right hand side. We start with the index of the array. Now let's just add two more index on this. On the left hand side, left of 0, we put minus 1. And on the right hand side, on the right of the last element, we just put another index here as the length of the array. Next, we determine the index of the smaller value on the left for each item in the array. For example, the first value here is 2. There's nothing left of 2, so we put minus 1. That's where the minus 1 is coming from. The second value is 1, and then there's nothing smaller than 1 on the left hand side. So again, we put minus 1. The third value is 5, and we see that the nearest smaller value on the left is 1, which is index 1. In this manner, we'll go through each item in the array and we will populate these values here. Next, we will also determine the index of the smaller value on the right hand side. The first item is 2 and the nearest smaller value on the right hand side is 1, so that is index 1. The second value is 1 and we don't see any smaller value on the right hand side, so we will take 6 from here. The third value is 5. The nearest smaller value on the right hand side is this value, which has an index of 4, so the 4 goes in here. 
we can go through this process, the values are as shown here. Once we have both sets of values, then we can calculate the width for each bar. And the formula here is that width equals to the value on the right minus the value on the left minus one. For example, this rectangle. So this rectangle has a height of two. We take six, we minus one here, and we minus a one again. We get four. So the width is four. And let's take a look at another example. Example, the height of five. We have on the left hand side, we have a four. And then we do a minus one. And then minus one again. Four minus two is two. So the width is two. Now that we know how to establish the width for each bar, and we also know the height, it's easy to calculate the largest area we can make from each of these individual bars. The values here, we're going to hold that in array called left. And the values here, we're going to hold those values in array called right. So the pseudo code for this function would be we have initiated both the left value and the right value. We write two functions where we can establish the index of the smaller value on the left and the index of the smaller value on the right. And then we will iterate the array. And then we're going to use the height times the width to get the area. And at the end, we'll return the maximum of the area that we have found. Now let's talk about these functions, find smaller left and find smaller right. We're going to use a monotonic stack for these functions. If you don't know what a monotonic stack is, I strongly encourage you to pause the video and watch the first video of this series. The link to that video is in the description below. There, I discuss in detail how everything works and explain every line of code. Also, we have established a template where we can use for this kind of function. It's to find the nearest smaller elements on the left, we use this template from video one. And in this template, we will populate the left array. We're building the stack when we're iterating from left to right. Because we are looking for the smaller value, we are making a stack that's increasing. And then we're going to assign left sub i if the stack is empty, then that means there is no smaller value on the left. Left sub i is going to be minus 1. So remember the index we talked about earlier, uh, we use minus 1 on the left hand side. Otherwise, we just take the item on the top of the stack and use the index. The stack is going to be holding a tuple, which includes the index and also height sub i. To find the nearest smaller elements on the right, we will use this template where we're going to populate the right array. Here, we are iterating the heights array in the reverse order. We are looking for the smaller element so the stack will be strictly increasing. If the stack is empty, we will populate right sub i as the height dot length. Remember, on the right hand side, if we don't see a smaller element, we will take the boundary of the array and we will assign the value 6. And if we do have a smaller element, then we will just take the item on the top of the stack and take the index up there. We will push onto the stack a tuple which includes the index and height sub i. Now that we have discussed the pseudo code, uh, let's look at the real code. This C -sharp implementation is available in the GitHub links below. We have the left and the right array, and then we will have this function of find smaller left and find smaller right, where we will take in the height array. And then we will have the for loop, we we'll iterate all the different bars in the histogram, and we'll determine the area, and we'll take the maximum area that we have seen, and return this as the maximum rectangle that we can generate. Now let's look at the find smaller left and find smaller right function. These are just sort of very similar to the pseudocode that I talked about earlier. Both will populate the stack, and the stack will take in a tuple, which includes the index and also the value. And the value here will be the height of each bar in the histogram. Before we test the code, let's talk about the runtime complexity. 
as we are using a monotonic stack, each element will place in the stack exactly once, and they will remove at most once. So the one time for everything here is O of N. Okay, now let's test the code. And it looks good. If you watch the video solution for this problem on Lee code, you will see that there is a more elegant solution for this problem. But the point here is not about finding elegant solution for any particular problem. It is about having set up building blocks at our disposal so that we can solve problems that we have not seen before. Hope you like this set of videos on monotonic stack. If there's anything that you want me to discuss, please leave a comment below. See you next time.